There are so many voices in this country that are speaking up and active, people active in their communities, that I'm not talking about a fringe minority or a silent majority, but the silenced majority, silenced by the mainstream media. The media today represents a minority elite. These all have to be challenged, and many people are doing it. It's Michael Franti here. This is Amy Goodman with, with Rochester, Rochester Indie Media. Hi, this is Dawn Zapelli with Rochester Indie Media, and today we have an exciting show. We're going to be talking about New York State Marches for Peace, and we have two terrific guests here in our studio. And you have a barefoot host, which maybe later you'll get a long shot and you'll see that I'm not wearing shoes because there's something about just freedom of expression and freedom to be who we want to be. So I just want us all to enjoy this topic today because we have some really interesting things happening in the anti-war movement here in Rochester and nationally that unfortunately is not being covered and talked about enough and we're going to bring it out to uh, your homes and hopefully you'll participate and get on board with this march we're going to be talking about if uh, not being able to walk the whole thing part of it or contribute somehow and realize that you're not alone out there feeling that the state of the world is horrible right now and there's a lot of changes we need to make you can come with us today and uh, other days as well so let me tell you who we have today in our studio mike totten he is president of the rochester local chapter of iraq veterans against the war thank you for coming today mike and we have Kathy Castagna, and she is representing a group called Declaration of Peace, as well as being a main organizer for New York Marches for Peace. And we're gonna to talk to both of our guests today about the anti-war movement locally, as well as this march. So let's start with Mike today. And Mike, first, if you would tell me, you are a veteran of the Iraq war and you did you were deployed in Iraq and how much time did you spend there and how did you come on board to the anti-war movement? I spent a year in Iraq from April 2003 to April 2004 during the invasion and you know while I was there I experienced a lot you know that, that drastically changed my points of view regarding the war um, both politically and even morally. Um, after I returned home I was discharged shortly thereafter returning home and you know it, it it really started uh changing my points of view and after doing a little bit of reading listening to other people speak about the war i i was on board with the anti-war movement specifically with iraq veterans against the war and now you're president so um that's quite a responsibility what does that include and what are the principles of iraq veterans against the war if you could sure on. sure the um the well, the principles of Iraq Veterans Against the War are, are three points of unity, which serve to unite us under, you know, a, as an organization. Um, the first one is is immediately and unconditionally withdrawing all American forces from from Iraq and 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 uh, disintegrating the the bases, the permanent bases that exist in Iraq today. Mm -hmm. The second point of unity is reparations being paid to the Iraqi people so that they can rebuild their country on their own terms without the influence of, of American, uh, American corporate corporations. And the third is that the veterans receive comprehensive benefits from the Department of Veterans Affairs for uh, mental health, um, including mental health issues regardless of their dis discharge status. Mm -hmm. And Kathy, just to um, get you on board here now, just give us a brief um, explanation of your entry point into being an anti-war activist and how you've come to ally now with military, you know, former veteran military members and the anti-war movement. Well, my activism started a long time ago. I was one of those folks who was very involved with the anti-war movement during the Vietnam War. and. And actually, it never stopped. I, I've been doing activism ever since. Um, when this war broke out, I think we realized that um, we needed new strategies, we needed new tactics, we need to figure out how to do things in a different way. 
um, you know, Vietnam, the anti-war uh, movement during Vietnam brought us only to a certain point. And I think now we're realizing that what we didn't know then that we need to know and to learn to do now is to form these partnerships across differences. And one difference that's really important is to look at soldiers um, in that partnership with us and look at soldiers as fellow human beings <coughs> in the struggle and um, to figure out how to, how to do that. It's incredible. I'm just so impressed with this um, recent testimony that happened, the Winter Soldiers and people, you know, these veterans and um, brave individuals coming forward to just talk about what they were forced to experience and to do and so honestly and openly and it's very powerful. It's very powerful to um, have heard that, to change the understanding and the consciousness of other people who wa are still being fed all this misinformation mm -hmm. about how right and just and what's going on and how this is for our freedom and, and to liberate Iraqis. So, Mike, you were part of that, the Winter Soldiers against the occupation of Iraq and Afghanistan. First, will you just tell us what is Winter Soldiers, where that comes from, and what your part of the testimony was about? Sure. The, the term Winter Soldier comes actually from Thomas Paine, and in 776 coined the term as people who stand up for their country, not in its countries, in his or her country's highest, most um, elite type of uh, form, if you will, but those who stand for their country in its lowest, during its lowest and, and its darkest hour. So the, the, that's where the term Winter Soldier comes from. Mm. Um, in 1971, a group of Vietnam veterans, about 100 of them, gathered in, in Detroit and testified to the atrocities and, and war horrors that they experienced or participated and or participated in during Vietnam and their experiences in Vietnam. We've um, piggybacked on that. Iraq Veterans Against the War at the national level has piggybacked on that. And last uh, March, in the middle of March, we, we gathered in Washington, D.C., and we testified as, as, a, uh, as a group of veterans to the war, s war horrors and atrocities that we had have either experienced or participated in. Mm. in our How academy. many people came out to testify? To testify, there was over, geez, 150 testifiers, civilian and, and veteran, and some active duty military. And what happens, what are some of the things that are happening with this testimony and what was the content of your testimony, if you could share part sure, of that for us? Sure, our, our intention with the testimony was to have it entered into the congressional record so that investigations can begin regarding the illegality or the illegality mm -hmm. of these occupations in Iraq and Afghanistan. And um, some of the contents of the testimonies had to do with mishandling of the war dead or torture and abuse of prisoners. Um, some had to do with uh, the rules of engagement and how they are very blurred, um, firing on civilians, fi firing on civilian targets, um, and things of that nature. My testimony specifically was um, testified to witnessing and participating in um, one event of, of prisoner abuse and, and, um, and mishandling enemy prisoners of war both at the, you know, both with American forces and with the coalition forces, so it wasn't just limited to Americans. How was that experience for you, the solidarity, people coming together in numbers to disclose these things and to speak out, and how has this been for you in your healing and recovery from your experience as well as educating others? And we got to kind of do that briefly, and then we're going to go to a break and come sure, back and talk sure. more. Thank you. The experience of Winter Soldier was incredibly powerful and very moving for me. It, it served to really reinforce that, there, that I'm not alone mm -hmm. and that there are others who have those similar experiences. It was very powerful. Great. Thank you. If you're just tuning in, this is Rochester Indie Media, and we'll be back after this break. <laughs> against the war, we also stand behind those who resist it. More and more U.S. service members are actively refusing to participate in the illegal, immoral invasion and occupation of Iraq. No more. We have a different path to take, and it doesn't matter what they do to us. It doesn't matter if they, if they take away our, um, our honorable discharge, if they put us in prison. Call it peace or call it treason, call it love or call it reason, but I ain't marching anymore. Anymore. 
Iraq Vets Against the War is a group of veterans that have served since 9-11 uh, in the War on Terror. And uh, we stand for three things. Uh, immediate withdrawal of all U.S. occupying forces from Iraq. Uh, reparations for the Iraqi people. And uh, full benefits for all veterans. And the reason I have the flag upside down on my shoulder is because it's a symbol of distress. Because I am very distressed. My friends are being stop lost and sent back to Iraq without their consent. Uh, the myth of the volunteer army is very distressing to me because it's not a volunteer army. Uh, we've been enslaving soldiers for six years now under the pretext of a national emergency. Which Back with Rochester Indy Media and our guests talking about New York State marches for peace and the local anti-war movement. And I was told by my floor manager, I'm hitting my hands as I talk during this interview. I hope it's not been too distracting. I'm trying to figure out what to do with my hands because normally they're in the air. So next show I might put weights on them or something. But anyway, we're back here with our terrific speakers from the local anti-war movement and we want to know what is going on with the local anti-war movement because you don't see or hear much in the news about what's going on. Are people still out there um, putting their bodies out on the line to stop these atrocities from getting things, you know, deployed, you know, what, what's, what are people doing and are we just not hearing about it or is it not happening? Are people tired after five years of this just unfathomable war? What, what is it? Kathy, I'll put that one to you. <laughs> I think the tired idea is such a big myth that's there. And um, if anything, we're energized. Um, and by all of the different activities that we have been doing, we're learning so much about how to be strategic in what we do. And um, we have many groups that are very active. And more and more people are coming on board. And I think the reason the myth exists is because our media um, rarely covers that. They rarely cover who the activists are out there and what we're doing. I often think about uh, something Amy Goodman said, which is that we need to embed our um, media into the peace movement like we've embedded it into the military. And maybe then people will really see what it, what it means to be an activist against the war and how hard people are working. Um, and I have to just say that currently one of the things that is energizing us is that we have formed this partnership with Iraq Vets Against the War and I'm really proud of Rochester when I go around to other cities in New York State and work with them. I, I see that Rochester has again been a trendsetter in moving forward in this partnership and we're helping other cities to look at ways to do that. Um, so this is an interesting uh, allegiance here and the allies of the um, civilian anti-war movement, which has been around while, you know, a lot of our young men were being, you know, sent over to Iraq and deployed there and fighting. Um, uh, then the consciousness shifts and we're bridging these groups. How is that cultural bridging and that relationship working out? I'm sure there's some differences and I'd like you both to speak to that if you would. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the differences exist, but what really unites almost everyone under this movement is, is the whole idea that the, the Iraq occupation and Afghanistan occupation are illegal, are immoral, and are wrong, simple. And that, that serves as, as a guide on for all of us to, to, to unite under that single banner. Mm -hmm. And if we can all keep that in the forefront of our minds when, when we come together at an event such as the base convergence at Watertown, that it really serves to to unify us. Do you feel support from the general anti-war yeah. population? You do. Yeah, I mean that's not even a question in my mind. Never, never have I not felt supported by by the anti-war community. And Kathy, would you like to speak to that? Yeah, I would. <coughs> I um, I feel like it's been a real learning for all of us as we move forward and. What's going to come at the end is a much stronger, more um, aware and conscious anti-war movement because of this partnership that we're forming. We're negotiating common ground. I'm not going to say that it's been easy. There's been lots of places where it's felt like parts of the peace and justice community has to give up some of their goals to uh, you know, just have this one peace 
that is we're asking for on the march, which is to adopt the just the points of unity from IVAW. It doesn't mean those other visions that we have for a peaceful, harmonious world and all of that isn't they're, it's, they're still there. Those things are still there. We're not taking those away. However, to be in partnership, to have those common goals is really, really important, and that's what we've been working through. And you know, I think that. What, we're, what we'll have in the end is probably something that will be the, the most threatening to um, the military industrial complex, so to speak, and our government, because they, they count on this divide. They expect it. And what we're doing by working through these challenges is showing that we're not going to be divided. We are going to work together. And going back to the media thing, we did an incredible Veterans Day last fall where the anti-war movement and veterans came together, Veterans for Peace, and we had something like 25 veterans there to do a piece on how we share the burden with veterans, and the media just totally ignored it. They went to other veterans' events that day, but did not choose to cover that. And for, for us, I think it was a symbol that what we're doing is on the right track, that that was threatening. And so we're continuing to do more things like that. Well, let's bring a lead in then to the march so um, we can get more information out about it, New York State Marches for Peace. Where did this come from? What are the, it's a coalition and it's a group of groups working together. So will you speak to that, how this began and what we can look forward to as the time gets closer? There's a group that was formed um, uh, back on after the September 29th event in Syracuse where again citizens and soldiers came together to speak out against the Iraq war and at that event groups from around New York State came together in the evening to talk about what we can do together as a statewide upstate statewide effort and so as a result of that we started meeting together in Syracuse and the idea for this walk to Fort Drum um, was formulated there. I have to say that a lot of that had to do with the fact that we were already meeting up in Watertown with some of the people from a uh, different drummer who had been working to build IVAW there in Watertown, which deploy the, that base, Fort Drum, deploys more soldiers to Iraq than any other base in the country. So clearly the New York State citizens needed to think a, a, about that and do mm -hmm. something. So that was our goal. What is Different Drummer? Can you explain what Different, uh, different Drummer is? Different Drummer is a cafe in Watertown, New York, where soldiers from the base are invited to come to talk about issues of the war and to get support for all kinds of veterans' benefits, um, PTSD. I went there to hear a panel speaking about PTSD. The police from Watertown came to learn about PTSD at Different Drummer, which I thought was really interesting. How, How was that received in such a hub of military, in the military community, the, the cafe? Well, the, the military actually even sent their current PTSD counselor event. So I'm not going to say that everything is harmonious like that, but I think that Fort Drum is getting used to the fact that different drummers there, it's there to stay. There is an anti-war movement of active duty soldiers who are coming to different drummer and declaring their membership in IVAW, which I think is powerful. And do they have good coffee? They do. They do. <laughs> we, gotta, we have to get there. So um, this is something we're gonna continue talking about uh, for our final segment of the show is all the details of the march, how, who's going, how we can get involved, how we can support this really exciting march, how we can get our legs moving, get some exercise. So stay tuned and come back to talk about it. Unimpeachable, that's what you are. Unimpeachable. Like the lost sense of democracy And the thought of all those atrocities Never before Has someone been more Unimpeachable 
And we're talking about New York State Marches for Peace. So let's find out all the details right now. We're back with Mike Totten and Kathy Castagna. And we're going to get all the information from these terrific organizers who have been dedicated to the anti-war movement for some time now and are an inspiration to me as I talk to you guys. Thank you so much. And thanks for coming to the show today and enlightening us. Um, what is the objective of the march? And where exactly is it going? How many miles? Who's going to come? Um, Mike, do you want to, or Kathy? Kathy can answer okay. the march piece. Okay. I'll talk more about the march, maybe, and um, Mike can fill you in on the, the festival end of it. Okay. Well, the march is intended to be a, um, um, a support for our soldiers and you know, active duty soldiers and Iraq vets against the war. It's to show that New York citizens are, are concerned and we care and that we're, going, we're reaching out. Um, and that's why we chose Fort Drum. We could have chosen, you know, Albany or some other place, but we felt like Fort Drum was really important because I think Mike has said this and maybe he'll even say it again, that this is the only war where we're forgetting our soldiers before the war is even over. I mean, that's incredible. Hmm. And so by inviting people to go up to Fort Drum um, in this 10-day walk, it is really telling our soldiers that we're here. We, we want to share the burden with you. We don't want you to carry it alone. And we want to bring the message that this war is illegal. This is something we've been studying and working with lots of people on and reading about. And we want to bring that message out to the communities we're walking through. So it's got dual purposes. And so the makeup of the marchers, I mean, what are the proportions we're looking at as far as um, anti-war veterans, anti-war activists, and civilian activists, and what about the disabled activists who well, again, are now the veterans? Again, we all are all united under the, under the banner of, we all are in agreement that the occupations are illegal. Mm -hmm. um, the makeup of the marchers is going to consist of IVAW members, some mm -hmm. of which are disabled, myself mm -hmm. included. Mm -hmm. so, so it's going to consist partially of us and partially of activists, anti-war activists, par partially, and we're hoping to elicit the support of the communities who we, who we encounter in the war. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say disabled, just for the um, viewers out there, you say disabled, you don't appear disabled. We talk about the disability that sure, you Sure. I, I, well, I, I, I rate through the VA system for my back. I've, I've, I experience back pain every day, but um, the reason for my discharge was for post-traumatic stress disorder. I experienced a lot of combat when I was deployed in Iraq, and, and much of which didn't really sink in until about six months after I returned home, five to six months after we returned home, where my leadership recognized it, and I was, I was given a discharge. And actions like this, like the New York State Marches for Peace, is that more support or equally supportive to anything you found within the system where you try to take these like, institutionalized avenues for support? How does that help you? The support that I received when I was in the Army was pathetic at best. I had a, I had a PT, I had a, an, an Army psychologist tell me that he wasn't well versed in dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder. Yeah, so, Which so that probably was... probably the number one like, yeah, disorders I mean, I'd imagine. So I, I questioned two. whether or not yeah. we've truly learned anything since the Vietnam era. Um, so, so absolutely, yeah, it's, it, it is comforting knowing that I do have the support behind me, but not necessarily only me, but the entire veteran population who, who does carry with them unvisible, invisible scars of these, these occupations, that they, we have the support of the community 
around us so and that we're not necessarily ghosting ourselves back into society. Would you like to see more just civilians in the community coming out and marching alongside or what would you well, like absolutely. to see? Well, absolutely. I think it's essential that more people become active in, in the community so that we can bring an end to these wars and, and take back what's rightfully ours, our, our right to say in government what we want it to see done. Mm -hmm. And Kathy, what are you expecting for the turnout? Where are people marching from? What, what kind of mileage are we talking? We got to get in shape for this, right? <laughs> I mean, we want to like Well, I, I love the way we've designed it because we have three feeder marches, one starting in the south from Ithaca, so any point south of there will join with the Ithaca march and come up through Syracuse. Mm -hmm. Then there's the march that starts in the Utica area, but we have people from Albany, Saratoga, other places joining with that one coming in from the east. And then our march is starting in Rochester and points west are coming, Buffalo and others are working with us. Um, and I really do love it because even though we call it a march or a walk, anybody can do it. People don't even have to walk to be on this. People can ride alongside, come out at lunch out of their cars and, and join with us and you know make community. Every evening we're going to have um, a program in the communities that we are passing through where we'll be um, hosted by those communities and then the feature of our program is the Iraq Vets Against the War talking about their experience and military families speak out. Um, many of these communities are rural and we know that they're paying a disproportionate cost of the war by the, the young men and women that are going out of these communities. So we expect that we'll have a lot of uh, parents of active duty soldiers coming to our program. And so you think the support along the way is going to be more positive than negative? You're not worried about any kind of um, lashback reactions to what you're doing and these? Well, we're not like going reaction. into this naive in any way. There could be that. And um, we're preparing ourselves through education and also just going in to learn. Like what is it that's making people angry? We're there to listen along the way as well as to talk about our our concerns but you know a lot of this will be listening and we'll, we'll be training ourselves in how to do that well. Well tell us when this march is and how people can get involved and who to contact so they okay, want more great. information. The march starts on um, May 8th and it goes to the 17th. We will be entering um, Watertown on the 16th and the festival that Mike is doing a lot of planning for is on the 17th from uh, 1 to 7. The March um, information is all up on the web. It's at a site that's nysmarchesforpeace.org. So all the information's there. And what we need right now immediately is for people, if they're thinking about coming, even for one hour, one day, you know, people can join for a whole week if they want. Whatever they intend to do, we really need them to start signing up. And Mike, how would you like to see people um, get involved to support whatever variety of things they can do or suggestions you'd make for people? Sure, sure. Well, well a common theme is, has been for, for organizing this is bridging the gap between the two cultures, the, the military culture and the civilian culture, and especially within the anti-war movement. And what we've been, one of our goals has been to accommodate both during the day-long music festival on the 17th. And because of that, I've been organizing a wide variety of musical performances, hip hop artists, to folk artists, to country singers, to some some really just some local people and, and some big names that are, are planned on coming and planned on performing for us. Wow. And so it's gonna be really accommodating for everyone. So even in these hard times, we can find some inspiration, we can have a good time, we can walk together and talk together and uh, dance and have a good time. So get on board and check in, tune in to Indie Media next week. That's it.